Hello, and thanks for your interest in the Animal Funding Atlas. This is a new grant mapping tool designed to facilitate collaboration and enable strategic grant making for animal related funders. The project is supported by the Summerlee Foundation, ASPCA, Tigers in America, and Maddie's Fund. My name is Che Green, and I'm with an organization called Faunalytics, and we're overseeing the development process as well as managing the grants database. The goal of this video is to give you an overview of the tool, including its basic features and functions. And I encourage you to check out the other two videos that we've created. One gives the background and history of the Animal Funding Atlas, and the other walks through three usage scenarios that we think will be helpful to animal-related funders as you use the tool. So what you see in front of you is the Animal Funding Atlas. It's a live version of the tool that we'll walk through and demonstrate. And it has, it's broken up into a few different areas. The main viewing area is a Google map driven engine. So it's, it's based on Google Maps and should be familiar with, to many of you, the controls. The plus and minus signs here will allow you to zoom in. You can use your cursor to drag the map around and zoom in in specific areas. The set and go features are unique tools that we've created to help you remember a particular map view if you've created one that's useful for you and your foundation. And then the go option will allow you to go to that. And then once you've set one, you can also change it. This polygon tool is a geographic search tool that I'll touch on in more here in a moment. On the left hand side is where most of the action happens. This is the search or the sidebar where you can define your search area as a first step. Define your search parameters as step two, and then choose what to show on the map as step three. Here in the upper right is a set of summary details that will be dynamic whenever you conduct a search using the Animal Funding Atlas. And so these numbers change as your filters and searches change. This is also where you can always access a list of view of any set of data that you've searched and refined. So for instance, this could be all of them as well. You open up a list view, it's broken up into grants, funders, and recipients. You can also double click on any of these in order to get details about a particular grant. In the lower right, you will see a legend that corresponds to a variety of indicators that we can apply as well as a variety of demographic overlays. And I'll touch on those in a moment. Let's start with some basic searches. And there are three ways to go about defining your geographical search area. The first is this free text entry where you can zoom into any particular geography, whether it's a zip code, a county, a state, what have you, and define a search radius around that center point. So let's just say we want to look at Tallahassee, Florida, which has a zip code of 32301. And we'll take a pretty expansive view of 300 mile radius around that. What we find is that the map zooms into the Tallahassee area and includes all recipients within a 300 mile radius. I will note that you will occasionally see some recipients outside of your particular search area. For instance, if you search for all of the United States, you will see some recipients in Canada. And the reason for that is because you have funders who are based in the United States and they have funded recipients based in Canada. And so in order to be inclusive and not return results that are missing data, we decided to, to cast a wider net, if you will, and include all of those folks in search parameters. Now, there are other ways that you can refine it in a more detailed fashion, but we thought that we would err on the side of being inclusive rather than exclusive. You can also perform this search, for instance, if you wanted to narrow into Florida, by using these drop down boxes here under or by geography. And this is broken up into all the primary regions of the world. And then you can choose the state or province within those regions to help you get to the geographic area of your choice. Now, finally, is this polygon tool. Let's say instead of Tallahassee, we are particularly interested in the Florida panhandle. We can use this tool to define that area in particular. It's one of the cooler features of the Animal Funding Atlas, and I think you'll find it very useful if you're looking at specific geographic areas. So once we close that polygon, you can see that then the number of recipients is restricted to just the Florida Panhandle area. 
we now have just 65 grants that have been included in our parameters. And we can, again, look at list view for all of those grants. We can look at who the recipients are. We can look at who the funders are, et cetera. So that's three ways to go about defining your ge geographic area. Let's just clear it all. You'll notice that once you choose different parameters and search areas, they appear as what we call facets up here under your selections. You can clear any individual facet or you can clear them all and reset the map, which is what I'll do now. The next, we want to, next step we want to look at is defining search parameters. And this is where the Animal Funding Atlas really becomes a unique tool for animal-related funders. In particular, you can look up different project focus and different species focus types. And we have created a taxonomy that includes more than 60 different types of projects and more than 90 different species. And that is to help animal grant makers in particular be very granular in your search and really get at the information that you'd want. First, however, let's just start with a basic keyword search. So for instance, if we wanted to find uh, anybody funded by the Summerlee Foundation, we can just type in Summerlee here, and we'll see that the map dynamically restricts to just 876 of the 17,000 grants, and that's represented by the Summerlee Foundation. You can see all those purple dots there. We can also hide those to show the single red dot that is the funder, that is the Summerlee Foundation itself. We can also just see through this green shading that the concentration of grants is in Texas and Colorado, which is what we would expect for the Summerlee Foundation. Again, showing recipients, we can do the same sort of thing for a grant recipient as well. So for instance, if I search on RES, I know that there's a, an organization not far from me called RES Education and Animal Resources and they're easy to find once you pop in that keyword search. Again, let me reset the map and then show a couple of the other unique tools for the Animal Funding Atlas. When using project focus and species focus, my recommendation is to use the browse option first. And then later, once you're more familiar with the taxonomy that we've created, you can use the keyword search to sort of quickly enter those as needed. But for now, I recommend using these drop-down areas to browse and then select things that way. What you'll find is that both project and species are broken up into two tiers. So we have, I think it's eight or nine categories here, and you can, using these arrows, you can divide into or dive into a second tier as well. And you can select any combination of these project types to refine and filter your searches. You can unselect all, which will create which will empty out the map. You can select all again, which will repopulate everything. And you can do the same exact, you can use the same exact approach with species as well. So again, we have something like 60 different project types that you can choose from in this browse list. We also have 90 different species types that you can choose from, again, broken up into two tiers. So we have companion animals, animals used for food, wildlife in different situations. And each one of those is broken up into specific species that are commonly used for those types of categories. So again, you can do any combination of both species and project focus to really narrow in on the type of search that you're looking for. A couple of relatively simple tools is that you can also filter by grant year and grant amount. And so the current universe uh, of the Animal Atlas is 1998 to 2019. You can choose any combination of those years. Uh, you can also restrict by grant amount if you want to isolate either very large funders or very small grants. And then you can also do similar things for the funder, him or herself or, or itself. The foundation can be, can be selected by type. So you can choose just private foundations or just operating foundations, what have you. And you can also filter by the funder's total giving volume. We won't show those in details. I think a lot of that's fairly intuitive. Uh, but what I wanted to show next was the ability to, to choose what is displayed on the map itself. And so I've already hinted at this. You can turn off funders and recipients. You can blank out the map that way. And then what you see left is this shading by state. 
and that's what we're calling an indicator. Right now, as you can see in the legend in the lower right, the indicator is the number of grants by state. So we see a, a <clears throat> excuse me, a strong concentration in California, a little bit in Texas, New York, Colorado, and Florida as well. We can also look at a variety of other, other indicators, including total value of grants, number of funders, number of grants by funders, number of recipients, total received by recipients, et cetera. And each one of those shows a slightly different picture uh, based on the underlying data. In addition to those indicators, we also have external data that we pull in to provide demographic overlays when those will be useful. And in the, the separate video showing scenarios, I'll give a couple of very specific examples of that. But let's just zoom in and get an idea of what we can get with these demographic overlays. So I'm going to choose, we have everything from population to a variety of education variables to income and poverty levels, as well as, as, well as ethnicity and then unemployment rate. So something that may be of interest to many animal-related funders is the percentage of people that live below the poverty line, which often aligns or lines up with our efforts for companion animals and other animals. In this case, we've got it broken down by state, so it's fairly, it's not very granular. It's just showing all of California, but you can also do this by county, by congressional district, by zip code. There's a variety of ways that you can break this down. And so let me just pull up county, county as one example. And you can see that now the state of California is broken up by county, and you can see the poverty level and how it differs for each of those counties. And this information can be then paired with animal-related grant information to see if we're hitting the mark or missing the mark in terms of the human population we're also trying to serve. Finally, I would just want to point out that you also have the ability to take a look at the background and definitions. This includes all of the different taxonomy variables that we've created, the definitions for those, as well as just sort of helpful hints and tips for using the animal funding outlets. I think that covers the basic features and functions. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me at any time. And I hope you'll check out the follow-up video, which goes through three specific scenarios that we think will be useful to you. Thanks very much.